in Challenge Cup finals, whether they be Super League finals or whether they just be local derby matches, um, just uncomparable. They were always my favourite favourite uh, games to play on. And I've got to say this also. Uh, when I asked the question, and a lot of a lot of Bull fans are probably good at this, but when I asked the question, what is my favourite ground to play at, I would say this proudly, it's Headingley. It is Headingley Stadium. Absolutely loved it. And this is back to the Bulls fan, because one of the greatest things that I loved doing at Headingley Stadium was silencing three of those stands. And just having that one little concreted stand down the end making a load of noise. Didn't always go our way, but sometimes it did. They were incredible games. The atmospheres were absolutely brilliant. The whole nature of the games between Bradford Bulls and Leeds Rhinos was it wasn't just about city against city. It was about mate against mate. It was also about family member against family member because in these derbies, households were split down the middle. I've got to remember one of the occasions uh, playing at Headingley. I remember doing what we did, getting changed in the changing room, underneath the stand, putting the headphones in. Uh, iPods had just come out. I think I might have had a Walkman still. Like that, eh, Elliot? A Walkman? That's one of them. Music on my head, walking out with the players, and what do you do? You read, you read the uh, team uh, program. I'm walking out, my head's down. I'm walking and walking along, and I get to halfway. And I look up, and there's about 5,000 people, because they've been under 19 games, so 5,000 uh, Leeds Rhinos supporters uh, standing in the old self stand. And obviously I can't hear them, I'm just looking at them and they're just going like this. All of them in unison going like this. So I push stop on my, uh, on my walkman, and all I heard was, Robbie Paul, Robbie Paul, Robbie, Robbie Paul, he gets the ball and he does go, Robbie, Robbie Paul. That's an incredible thing to, to have sung to you uh, before you play, a, you play a game of rugby league. It is absolutely amazing. And, my, uh, and who needs enemies when you have friends like that? So, you know, it's all right. I'm in the security of my brother, so I cracked up laughing, turned to see my teammates all around me. No. That's seen exactly what had happened. They had stopped on the sideline. I was stood in the middle of Italy on my own, copying that from 5,000 Leeds Rhino supporters. So, incredible day and an incredible occasion coming up this weekend. Uh, it's been done. It's back. The biggest derby in rugby history. And it's coming this weekend. A lot of the um, uh, promotion for the, the old Warrington uh, Halifax also game that happened earlier this week, uh, back in, what was it, 1954, was that the right year? 1954, you can see the big photo of it out there, where well, officially 105,000 people came into the stadium, and they say it's actually more because they had to open one of the gates, so it was actually there on 120,000 people. Apparently this weekend we're going to get an audience that's going to rival that, so get excited, get excited. All right, on to the real reason why we're here. So I want to introduce uh, the, the top table guests uh, first and foremost. We're going to field um, um, uh, questions from the floor and then everybody will be available for one-to-ones just after. So first I want to introduce uh, the competitors, guys coming to Oddsville Stadium this, this week. First up, James Donaldson, Leeds Rhinos superstar and the newly appointed head coach, Richard Ager. And to join them will be Elliot Minchella and John Kerr. Now it's over to the floor, thank you. Any questions? Uh, Matt Shaw, League at Rest. John, how are your emotions headed into this weekend? Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, uh, I love this competition, first of all, uh, mm. because it's chapter of rugby, uh, you know, you lose and you're out. Mm. So there's, there's an element of, uh, of pressure there. 
but also I think the, the history of the competition is fantastic. You know, Super League is like the innovation and the Challenge Cup's like the, the tradition for the, for the game. And obviously on top of that there's this tie, and this is the tie we wanted as the Bulls, uh, because obviously as a club we're going to get a big crowd, it's going to be great for the Coffers, and it lets uh, the little underdog have a shot at the, uh, you know, the big city big city team so uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday so really looking forward to it and really enjoying the building. Rich, that's for you I guess you couldn't really come into a, a game of a, a bigger magnitude for the, uh, for the first game in charge could you? No it's been a you know it's been a difficult week um, you know I know we're talking about the game but it, it goes without saying uh, we're all, um, all pretty shocked at, at the turn of events of the weekend and sort of how could it happen um, you know we've got to regather ourselves and if we're talking about emotion you know make sure our emotions are very much in the right place towards this game uh, and you know we've not got long to do that but you know, we got the players in and out yesterday um, obviously everybody needed some time uh, to digest exactly what was going on and what had happened but you know it's important that uh, we get our focus towards this game uh, it will be an emotionally charged game. Um, you know, it's been a while since there's been a, a competitive fixture between the teams, and, and you know, as John said, it's trapped door football. Uh, so you know, we need to make sure that we manage those uh, manage those emotions and make sure you know our attitude is spot on. John, uh, a question for you. Obviously, as Rob has just said, it's It's a week after the. I can, I can hear you, Mick. It's all right. <laughs> John, it's a week after the, you know, the record crowd 65 years ago, uh, and already strong ticket sales. You know, it's going to be great to see Old Sun full again with hopefully a uh, five-figure plus crowd. Yeah, it is, and, and it's important for for us as as a group of of people uh, because we've spoken last year we're in League One, and that was the the lowest point this club could go and we spoke about rewriting history and the fact that rewriting the history was first of all to climb from League One to the Championship and then hopefully we're going to climb from the Championship to Super League in the fullness of time and another thing about rewriting the history is obviously the crowds have declined and because of our performances in the last year and a half they're now improving and increasing and obviously this, this game on, on Saturday is a massive marker to us to say well if we are in Super League and we are playing against elite teams like the Leeds Rhinos, how many of you fellas are going to come along, how many of you fellas and ladies are going to come along and watch us and hopefully it is five figures and, it, and it's well in excess of the, of the 10,000 because uh, you know I think it'll be a cracking game. I hope the weather's going to be kind to us and uh, let's hope that, you know, I, I'm hoping for a songs of praise event because when the television cameras go to a church, it fills the church out. So, well, hopefully the television cameras coming in, it fills this stand out. And obviously, John, uh, with the, as we've discussed throughout the season, uh, you know, on regular occasions, eight, nine Bradford Ball players in the side, and if you're a Bradford Ball player, there's one club you always want to be, and that's Leeds. Yeah, I mean, you know, well, I played for Cast and I always wanted to be Leeds as well, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's part of that, you know, it's it's local live drivers, isn't it, you know, there's, there's some great derbies in rugby league, uh, I mean, Rich has been involved in all old kicks and ones, I was uh, for, uh, fortunate to uh, be involved in that, I've done Wakefield Leeds, Wakefield Casts, I've done Wigan Saints, and this is up there amongst it, isn't it? So uh, I'm really looking forward to my first one, and I, and I can't wait for Saturday afternoon to come around, although there's a fair bit of work for, for us as the players and coaches to do in these 72 hours building up to it. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Um, it's been a a little while since I've played also, um, but I've had some of the, you know, the best games of my career here, you know, and I, you know, when I did play, you know, I love this club, um, you know, I've got some very fond memories of, of being here, but um, I'm excited to come back on the other side of the fence and, you know, 
look to uh, put performance in. Um, and I think that as players ourselves, you know, we've got a point to prove as well, especially with a new coach being in. Um, we we'll have to put our best foot forward and, and uh, show what we've got to offer um, going forward as well. Richard, John alluded to the fact you've been involved in the big derbies throughout your career. Where does this derby rank on the list, do you think? Yeah, exciting. I think, um, you know, we can all remember the not too distant past where we can remember Stuart Fielding and Barry McDermott swung it out. Barry McDermott and uh, Darren Fleary. And, and Robbie and Henry playing in football, massive games at the time. You know, both teams had big squads, you know, 20,000 plus crowds all the time, and it, it was a real good era for Super League. Uh, you know, we're conscious that some of our boys, you know, unfortunately haven't had the experience of playing in a Leeds Bradford derby. Um, you know, so we want it to be a big thing, and again, throw the added extra to Challenge Cup tie too, gives it, you know, give it some, uh, some act, extra added importance. Um, obviously, I was as a kid, you know, coming out to Bradford, standing on the terraces, watching, watching these games, and um, yeah, certainly ones that wanted to be involved in as a, as a lad from Bradford. You, you know, you want to play for Bradford and play against these and be in these big games. So, um, thankfully, once come around, it you know, a dream draw for the club, and um, yeah, us as players are all looking forward to it. And uh, you know, but it's a game to be played at the end of the day. I know it's a big occasion, but we've got to. Try and take that away, you know, a little bit and concentrate on the game. So we'll be, we'll be doing our best to get the win. John, just being alluded to, there's a lot of brand new players in New York. What do you think? I think Derby like this, having that local group talent, is an advantage. Yeah, it, it's bound to do because it means so much to them. I mean, uh, I think Mick remarked there were nine it, within our squad uh, at the weekend. There was nine, so that's that's half of the squad at the Bradford lads. So, you know, a Bradford lad playing in a Bradford team against a, a, a local rival here, obviously, I'm hoping it, it should inspire them. And, uh, you know, an inspirational performance will be what's required because, you know, let's face it, we are the underdogs and Leeds are the, uh, are the Super League team and an established Super League team. We are re emerging. And, but it's just great to see how well we're doing with our re-emergence. But it certainly helps our local kids play for the local team, no doubt about it. That emotional investment, how do you challenge the correct <coughs> because there is the threat that you can challenge the wrong way and it be negative. Yeah, I mean, you know, they can, you could have played the game before you, the game started, you know, because you, you're so wound up with it. Well, my job is to make sure that they're, they're ready to play when, when the ball's kicked for the kickoff. So. You know, we'll, we'll be doing some work on that in the team meetings and so on. But uh, you know, at the minute we, we've got to preview Leeds. Uh, we've got to review ourselves from Toronto as well because the players have had a couple of days rest after that journey. And then uh, you know, we can really specify Leeds and, and hopefully look to get our mental preparation correct as well, so that they're ready to play when it's to kick off time. Jim, Richard uh, alluded to the fact that. Some players in the sport that haven't been involved in these now, you know what it means to be a part of this now. Will you be sharing your experiences and your knowledge with your teammates? Yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose coming from Cumbria myself, you know, I'm not Bradford, Bradford born or Leeds born. Um, but the game does mean a lot to me personally. Um, you know, these are the, the games that, you know, growing up you want to play in. Um, in front of these big crowds, um, two big teams clashing. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, past you know my past experience onto the lads. But you know I think the the lads generally uh, know how much this, this game means to the club and uh, will prepare themselves in the way they need to you know to get the, the performance that they need. John, you just come out of a game with Toronto. Uh, you compete well for the match, you describe them as a Super League team. How well does that set you up for this match? It's almost like a warm up, really. Well, I wouldn't put it as a warm up, but I'd say <laughs> put it as a, uh, as, as a, as a marker because uh, they, I mean, I call them, I think, a Super League team in disguise. You've got to look at the personnel within them, you know. If you've got John Wilkin, if you've got Chase Stanley, if you've got Gareth O'Brien, uh, you're a pretty decent team. and, and and they have, they're a really good team and 
we did compete with them for you know the vast majority of that game. We played well, uh, and I think if Toronto would have been a bit off, we might have got them. But Toronto were off their <coughs> on the ball as well, and I thought it made for a great contest. And, and we came away from that as a group feeling really pleased in how in the marker we put down against a very very good group of league team. So it, it's helped us, and it, yeah, it will help us because. Toronto are the, are the best team in the championship, but obviously they're a championship team. Well, Leeds are, are established within the, the Super League, so it's another step up. And it's another step up with regard to the, the competition, what it means for the competition, with regard to the opposition, and with, with regard to the occasion as well. But it's, it was great preparation, yeah. Sean, there's a, a number of, perhaps, of players uh, who started their careers out at Leeds. Do you think they'll be a any motivational uh, issues uh, with that factor in? No, no, I'm, I'm hoping that it, uh, they're upset <laughs> because uh, you know if they've been if they've been flicked by Leeds, let's hope they uh, they feel that they're a part to prove. I, and, uh, I did flick them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we could certainly stoke those embers, can't we? No, I, I don't think that's an issue. I mean, you know, <laughs> you always if, if you're a rugby league player. Nine rugby league players out of ten at some stage are going to play against their own club, and if that's the case, you've just got to handle it. If it inspires you, I'd be delighted, but uh, it has different effects on different people. And not only is the club going to be under the microscope on the field, John, it's going to be what happens off the field and how it handles a, a big crowd inside also for them for the first time in five years. Uh, how it handles a, bit, a big crowd at the top so and how it handles uh, an occasion on terrestrial television because uh, you know the good old BBC it's uh, there'll be a million and a half people who will be watching it so we need we, we've a duty to the game both Leeds and Bradford of uh, putting our, our best foot forward and making it an enthralling contest we really have and, and hopefully it will be as such.